Good evening. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. Just a quick announcement. You can follow along with the Psalms and readings, the texts for the Office of Tenebrae uh, at the homepage of the Cathedral website, holycrossboston.com. Uh, click the button that says Worship Guide, and that will have the program for today's Office of Tenebrae. That's at the homepage of the Cathedral website, holycrossboston.com. Thank you.
O oh God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, tonight we enter into the solemn mysteries of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection with quiet prayer and attentive anticipation, let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. the way of salvation you chose that the standard of the cross should go before us and you fulfilled the ancient prophecies in Christ's Passover from death to life in your compassion free us when we sin and in time of distress through the contemplation of his sufferings make us burn with zeal for the honor of your church and with grateful love of you through Christ our Lord
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, when your Son was handed over and endured the Passion, he seemed abandoned by you, yet he cried out to you from the cross and destroyed death forever. By his death and resurrection, may we look forward to the day when the poor of the world are saved, the downtrodden lifted up, and the chains that bind the oppressed be broken through Christ our Lord.
the Lord be in your heart and lift you to my prayer to proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into a city, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends, thank you for joining us for this tenebrae service. Today traditionally has been called Spy Wednesday because the enemies of the Lord are conspiring against him and looking for the opportunity to kill him. Today's gospel begins with Judas's words. How much will you give me? How much will you give me if I hand over Jesus? 30 pieces of silver was the answer. Judas was a man who loved money. A few days ago, The gospel spoke to us about a banquet in Bethany just a few days before Jesus entered Jerusalem. At that banquet, a woman came with an alabaster jar filled with precious nard, and she broke it and poured the perfume on the head of Jesus. The gospel tells us that the value of the perfume was 300 denarii, one year's wages. Judas Iscariot was indignant. He said, why this could have been sold and we could have used this money to help the poor. But the gospel said, he didn't care about the poor, but he cared about the money. All of us are acquainted with the beautiful 
painting of Da Vinci of the Last Supper, which is in the convent wall in, in a monastery in Milan. Da Vinci is portraying the Last Supper at the very moment where Jesus has said, one of you is going to betray me. And Da Vinci shows them, asking, the, is it I, Lord? Surely it's not me. They did not protest, saying it could never happen, because they knew that if Jesus said it was going to happen, it was going to happen. They knew what evil human heart was capable of. Jesus says, the one who dips his bread in the same plate, wow, who eats off the same plate? It's not the stranger. It's not the enemy. The one who eats off the same plate is the friend, the family member. And that's who Jesus was with Judas. In the second Eucharistic prayer, the oldest Eucharistic prayer. In the words of institution, the priest begins before the consecration saying, On the t at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. Judas's betrayal is mentioned right in the heart of the Mass. Jus Judas is at the Last Supper. Jesus washes his feet he doesn't protest like Peter saying, oh, you'll never wash my feet, I'm not worthy. No. He allows Jesus to kneel in front of him and wash his feet. In John's Gospel, in the account of the Last Supper, we read that once Judas had taken the bread, he went out of the cynical, and the Gospel says, and it was night. Judas had allowed the darkness to enter into his heart because of his love of money, because of his jealousy. We don't know. All four Gospels recount how Judas arrived at Gethsemane with armed men to arrest Jesus. And Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss. Later on, he is so overcome with darkness that Judas tries to return the money and commits suicide. When we choose something over God, we begin to slip into the darkness. In our own lives, we have darkness because of our sinfulness, damaged relationships, our involvement in wealth, pleasure, power. We bring darkness into our lives like Judas by putting false gods in the place of God. In the ancient world, People believed in the Ptolemaic concept of the universe. In other words, the earth was the center and all of the planets revolved around the earth. It was only later, it was a revolution when they discovered that actually Copernicus's idea, his concept of the universe, where the sun is in the middle and the planets, including the earth, are revolving around the sun. In our own lives, we have to see that we are not the center of the universe. It is God. And it's only when we see God as the center of our lives that we will be able to move out of the darkness. Jealousy, lust, anger, sloth, allow darkness to enter into our hearts. 
Christ is the light, the compass that leads us out of the darkness into salvation. In the garden, Jesus says to the apostles, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. It makes you think that Judas had stopped praying and that's why he succumbed to temptation. That's why his question was, how much will you give me? You also think that he must have been drifting away from his brother apostles and from Jesus, secretly meeting with the Pharisees and the high priests, looking for ways to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Pope Francis, in his letter on holiness, says that the road to holiness comes through prayer and community. A few years ago when I visited the shrine, the, the room where one of our Capuchin saints, St. Conrad, lived in Bavaria, he was the porter at the monastery and lived in this little cell, and he had two windows. One of the windows looked out into the church where he could see the tabernacle, the Blessed Sacrament. And the other window looked at the road where the pilgrims came, seeking alms and rest and forgiveness. We need the same windows so that the light of Christ can invade our hearts and help to free us from the darkness that is around us. Yes, holiness comes, as, Saint, as Pope Francis says, through prayer and community. The Christ candle tonight is a reminder that even when things are the darkest, Christ is near, guiding us by his light. But we will have the strength to follow that light if we are faithful to prayer and to community. Let us pray to our Redeemer, who suffered for us, was buried, and rose from the dead. Our response is, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord and Master, for us you became obedient even to death. Keep us faithful to God's will in the darkness of our lives. Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus, our life, by dying on the cross you destroyed hell and death. Grant that we may die with you and rise with you in glory. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. Christ, our King, who are the scorn of the people, a worm, not a man, teach us to tread your path of humility. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on, us. on us. Jesus, our Savior, who laid down your life for your friends, let us love one another as you have loved us. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. On us. Jesus, our hope, who stretched out your hands on the cross to embrace all ages, gather all God's scattered children into the kingdom of heaven. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
a velo benedicaris in cuius honore cremabilis.
Let us pray. Merciful God, your light has filled the world. This light has freed us from the power of the enemy. Your radiant love has left our presence, but we await with hopeful hearts for the light of the world to return in full glory in the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.